Hello and welcome to Veterans Metals Workshop. We're really glad to have you with us today because we're going to take a look at some unique patches from World War II. We're going to take a look at the patches of the Army Ground Force. And you'll say the Army Ground Force, well, uh, the Antilles, Panama, Hawaii, Alaska, Greenland, Iceland, the Philippines, China, the Persian Gulf, You'll be surprised at where the U.S. Army had ground forces in World War II. And this will be a really neat tour. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, by the way, all of the patches you see today come from Major Peter Morgan's book, um, what's it called? United States Military Patches. And it has over 5,000 U.S. military patches in it. Probably the best collection in the United States available. If you order it on Amazon, make sure that you get the new expanded edition. You do not want one of the older editions that might be out there on eBay. It might say new edition. You want the one that has expanded edition. Peter is 92 years old now. He said he's not doing another book. This will be the last opportunity to get this book, and it's beautifully done. So I recommend it. All right, come on. Let's go take a look. <laughs> Let's go take a look at the Army ground force patches from World War II. You'll enjoy it. Start with some Army patches in World War II that you probably didn't even know existed, and those are the coastal artillery districts. All of these patch designs were in the colors of the coastal artillery, that is scarlet and gold, and uh, they're very unique. Shown starting on the left was the 1st Coast Artillery District, which was redesignated as the New England Frontier Defense Sector and was responsible for harbor defenses from the northern boundary of the United States to Nantucket Shoal Lightship and displays a single projectile to indicate the unit's number. The 2nd Coast Artillery District was redesignated as the New York-Philadelphia Frontier Defense Sector and was responsible for harbor defenses from the Nantucket Shoals Lighthouse to the north, roughly the southern boundary of Delaware. And the shoulder patch was uh, displayed two projectiles to indicate the unit's number. The 3rd Coast Artillery District was redesignated as the Chesapeake Bay Frontier Defense Sector and was responsible for harbor defenses from southern Delaware to Surf City, North Carolina, and then to the northwest. The 4th Coast Artillery District was responsible for defenses from Surf City, North Carolina, all the way to the Rio Grande River. And the shoulder patch had four projectiles over a square to indicate the unit's number. Don't ask me what happened to the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th Coast Artillery District. I don't know. But the 9th Coast Artillery District was responsible for harbor defenses from the Canadian border in the north to the Mexican border in the south. And the patch had a nine-sided star representing the unit numbers. At the top is the red, white, and blue anti-aircraft command patch, and it was activated in 1942 with the purpose of training all the officers and enlisted men in anti-aircraft artillery and running all of the replacement centers. Well, it included barrage balloons also. Don't let me forget that. Command was discontinued at Fort Bliss in 1945. Lower left is the patch of the anti-aircraft Eastern Defense Command that was assigned to defend New England, the northeastern states as far west as the Mississippi River, and as far south as Kentucky, Virginia, and the northeast sector of North Carolina from Gatewood southeast to Surf City. The patch consists of a stylized letters AAAC representing the air, the any aircraft artillery command. The unique patch that sort of looks like a Zulu warrior's shield was actually the Anti-Aircraft Central Defense Command's patch, and it was assigned to defend the nine central states of the United States, Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North and South Dakota, and Wyoming. And the patch, well, the two spears represent the dual nature of the command with the Second Army. Patch in the lower right was the Anti-Aircraft Command Southern Defense, and it was assigned to defend all the southern states south of North Carolina uh, to include Tennessee, Arkansas, and as far west as Texas, Oklahoma, and New Mexico. And the patch was, well, it was three patterns representing a dual nature of the command with the Third Army. 
There's another Army patch you've probably never seen. The Eastern Defense Command, which was activated in March of 1942 with headquarters in New York City, and its primary mission was to defend the United States from invasion until it was relieved. The colors of the patch were red, yellow, and blue, representing artillery, cavalry, and infantry branches, which were the major components of the command, while the tridents and the wavy petition line represented its coastal defense functions. The Defense Eastern Command eventually took over the Defense Command Southern and the Defense Command Western, although for a while the Defense Command Western was actually considered a theater of operation. On the next patch is a very unusual, the Hawaiian Coast Artillery Brigade and the Hawaiian Coastal Defense Patch. Now we'll take a look at a series of patches that Peter Morgan said he used to have more questions about than any others. And the first one starting on your left is the Antilles Department, which was originally organized in 1939 as the Puerto Rican Department. But in 1942, its responsibilities were expanded for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, and the new Antilles Department was set up in San Juan. The patch is a turreted battlement of Moro Castle, it, which is a famous landmark in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and that's where the department headquarters were located. The colors red and gold suggest the early Spanish heritage of the islands. Next patch is the Hawaiian Department, which was established prior to World War II, and during the early months of the war, after the Japanese attacked killing almost 4,000 American servicemen, it had the responsibility of holding Hawaii against all enemy forces, including hostile sympathizers. Uh, the patch was worn by the Hawaiian Department, well, in originally back all the way to 1922, and the stylized H represents Hawaii. The eight sides of the insignia refer to the eight islands of a Hawaiian group, and the colors scarlet and yellow are the old royal Hawaiian colors. Next patch is that of the Panama Canal Department, and it was originally established in 1917 as a separate military agency with the responsibility of defending the Panama Canal. During World War II, the number of troops were built up to almost 20,000 soldiers, and the patch itself suggests the Isthmus of Panama where the command was operational, and the colors are red and yellow and, and to represent the original Spanish colors at well reflect the Spanish heritage of the area. Panama Hellgate insignia is believed to have been worn by some of the commands that were in the defense of Panama, but it was originally the patch, uh, minus the word Panama, of the Panama Canal Division that was formed in 1922, but it was inactivated in 1931 and demobilized in 1938. So I can't tell you exactly who all wore the Hellgate patch, but it's extremely popular. Well, the patch symbolizes the Isma for Panama as a gateway through which passes the commerce of the Atlantic and the Pacific. And of course, it shows a strong gate made of wood or iron. And the red and gold colors are the old Spanish colors of the Panama Canal area. The blue and white patch is the patch of the Philippine Department, which was originally established in 1913, and it was responsible for all 7,000 islands of the Philippines. During 1941, it consisted of 19,000 U.S. troops, 12,000 Filipino scouts, and about 100,000 newly activated and poorly equipped Philippine Army. The Philippine Command ceased to exist in June 1942 when the Japanese invaders informed General Wainwright, your high command ceases and you are now a prisoner of war. The patch itself was approved in 1922 and depicts a sea lion banishing a sword. The sea lion is from the coat of arms of Spain and suggests the Spanish heritage as well as the maritime nature of the area where the command was operational. The final patch on the right is the Alaskan Command, which was activated in November 1943 with the headquarters at Fort Richardson, Alaska, and it had the mission of supervising and training ground force tactical units. The bear on the patch is suggestive of a great bear constellation, and the star represents the North Star. In addition, the polar bear was chosen as the representative of Alaska, and the bear is snarling in defiance as a warning to those who would invade his domain. Pretty cool patch. The first patch on your left is the Joint United States Military Advisory Group, Korea. 
called Just Mad K and was formed to incorporate all of the service branches in Korea under a single command. The original insignia was made in the shape of a bell, suggesting the ancient bell of Seoul, Korea, and uh, a separate tag or tab was added at the bottom to indicate that this was a joint military advisory group. The red, white, and blue colors, as well as the eagle, allude to the United States. The variation of this patch was the Korean military advisor group called KMAG, and it had the same insignia except that the tab at the bottom had KMAG in it, and it had an olive drab colored border. Next very unique patch is the Labrador in Northeast Canada Command. It was established as a result of a joint Canadian-American agreement with the mission of putting airfields into parts of Canada. The patch itself is an interesting design. It produces the effect of an igloo with a snowfield in front and the aurora behind as representation well as representing the area where the command was located. And the colors are red, white, and blue, the national colors. The unique patch was the London based command, which replaced the previously organized headquarters command US Army British Isles. The patch itself was only approved for local wear and it featured the famous London, well, landmark, Big Ben, in the colors red, white, and blue, of course, are the national colors. Next patch is a Persian Gulf Service Command that was activated in 1942 and eventually set up in Tehran, Iran. One of its major purposes was to ensure no interruption of the major flow of massive supplies to Russia. The patch itself is, a, uh, is light green, a uh, seven-pointed white star is from the flag of Iraq and the sword from the flag of Iran. The green color, of course, suggests Islam, red sacrifice, and white purity. Uh, the command was deactivated in December 1945. The first patch on your left is the U.S. Army Garrison Okinawa or the Okinawa Base Command. It's a regular Army unit with its headquarters on the island of Okinawa. The black and gold patch has a symbol of a gate to a Shinto temple and suggests that Okinawa is the gateway to Japan. The East Asia Command patch is interesting because it was designed for both American and British forces, and since the British wore it on either shoulder, the phoenix had to be facing to the front always, and that's why you see a left and right design. The phoenix rising from the flames is a symbol of hope and rejuvenation for all of the nations torn by war. It represented the U.S. Army forces in the South Atlantic, and it was stationed in Brazil. Stars on the patch are representative of the Southern Cross, and the wavy scrolls are suggestive of the South Atlantic. The Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Forces is loaded with symbolism. The black shield represents the darkness of the Axis oppression, and the sword with the rising flames represents liberation and justice. The multicolored arc above the sword forms a rainbow suggesting hope, and it also contains the colors of the flags of all the Allies. The sky blue above the rainbow represents a state of peace and tranquility to be restored to enslaved people by the United Nations. The same shoulder patch, except with an all-blue background, was approved for wear by U.S. Army Europe headquarters in August 1945. Of course, the Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force Europe had its very own band, and the name of the band was of the Invaders, as you can tell by the tab over the patch. I just thought you'd like to see that one. The patch to the right of it is the General Headquarters Southwest Pacific Area under the command of General MacArthur. The patch was established or approved in 1945 and featured a blue waving flag with the letters GHQ representing the unit's designation. After the war in 46 or so, the background color of the flag was changed to purple. So the one with the blue on the left was the World War II variation. The one with the purple on the right is a post-World War II variation. Quarters European Theater of Operations patch went through a number of redesigns as its missions changed. The final design is shown here 
with the World War II Victory Eagle with wings raised in the V for Victory sign, the stars representing the liberation of oppressed people of Europe, and the blue, white, and red divisions above the eagle are representing the will of the American people in furnishing men for the ground forces and supplies for the service force. Original headquarters European Theater of Operation Patch was established in, well, February 1944, and it was based on a design of twin thunderbolts representing the ground and air forces breaking the chain now enslaving Europe. And it also formed a V for victory, which was a common symbol for both U.S. and British forces. The second variation of the patch had the Army Service Force insignia applied between the thunderbolts and occasional use of a tab above to identify a specific area. The Military District of Washington was established in May of 1942 in order to obtain unity of command for the defense of the nation's capital. The patch depicts a sword protecting the Washington Monument, which is representing the op operational area of the district, and the blue represents the U.S. Navy and the infantry, the scarlet is for the field and coast artillery and the engineers, and the green and gold represent the military police corps. The small red, white, and blue patch with the letters AF in the center represented the Allied Forces Headquarters, which was responsible for planning operations in North Africa, uh, Italy, and in the continent. Uh, variations of the patch exist as shown by the one with uh, white letters on a black background. The shoulder patch worn by the Airborne Command depicts a glider and a parachute on a red shield. The patch was made with the tab attached, as illustrated, and also without the tab. And actually, the Airborne Command was at headquarters at Fort Benning, and it activated over, well, 12 glider regiments, 16 parachute infantry regiments, and all of the elements of five airborne divisions in their artillery. The most distinctive and famous patches of World War II was the China-Burma-India headquarters patch. The soldiers of the China-Burma-India Theater had to solve logistical, tactical, and political problems of unbelievable complexity, but they achieved their mission. The patch, which has actually been in use since 1942, wasn't improved until 1944, and it has the sun of 12 rays that represent China, and the star represents the star of India. The red, white, and blue of his shield represent the national colors of the United States. Patches, the U.S. Army Forces in North Africa Theater of Operations, which was established in 1943 under the command of General Eisenhower. The patch has a Moorish arch, which represents the area of operation, and the colors were red, white, and blue of the nation. The U.S. Army Force in the Middle East was established in June of 1942 with a major operational responsibility of supporting the 9th Air Force. The white star above the wavy bars is representative of hope to a world in flames, and the blue represents the Mediterranean area where the command was operational. The U.S. Army forces in the Western Pacific were established in June of 1945 with their headquarters at Manila, Philippine Islands. The five stars represent the Southern Cross, suggestive of the area where the command was first operational, and the yellow flash signifies the prompt accomplishments of all missions. The basic patch design is taken from the shoulder patch worn by the Army Service Forces. The final patch we'll look at is the U.S. Army Forces Pacific Ocean Area, which was established in August of 1944. The stars on the patch form two constellations, Ursula Major uh, with the North Star and the Southern Cross, representing operations of the command in areas located in the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. The blue disc suggests the Pacific Ocean, and the arrow is representative of the strength and valor of the armed forces of the United States. And the map is oriented to point from Hawaii to the Japanese mainland. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today for our show on Army Ground Unit Patches of World War II, and special thanks to Medal of America and Fountain in South Carolina for sponsoring our show. Um, by the way, if you enjoy these, please subscribe. Okay, see you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop.
All of the patches you are seeing today came from Peter Morgan's patchbook, United States Military Patch Guide. It's available for you on Amazon, and always look for the new and expanded edition. Thank <laughs> you.